Welcome everybody to a new series we're going to try here on the channel. Uh, this is Rebirth. It is one of the overhauls of Seven Days to Die. Uh, this is going to be a blind to start here because I know almost nothing about this overhaul. I do remember watching somebody play it, oh, about a year and a half or so ago. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, oh, this looks like a pretty cool mod. I'd like to give it a try. But um, I didn't continue watching. And um, like I said, I really don't know much about it at all. So this is going to definitely be a blind playthrough. Um, so let's jump in and get started here. Um, we're going to start a new game and we're going to call this Rebirth. And let's make this a an 8K world. And uh, how about if we use today's date as the seed? So it's November 1st, so we'll do 11 one, uh, 24. And it looks like that's going to put us in the Codezo Mountains. Uh, I'm not going to do advanced generation. I'm just going to let it, let it do its thing. As far as settings go, um, we're going to play on Warrior difficulty. I normally play on Insane difficulty, in, in uh, especially on Vanilla. Uh, for those of you who have been watching me for a while, you know that. But uh, because this is an, uh, an overhaul and I'm not um, familiar with it, uh, and I don't know what to expect, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually play it on Warrior difficulty instead of Insane this time around. Uh, we will keep the XP multiplier on, uh, you know, the normal 100%. Uh, I do like 90 minute days, a little bit longer days uh, in the game, so we'll keep that there that way. Blood Moons will just keep on seven days, 32 enemies. Uh, I'm also cutting down the zombie day speed to sprint because here again, I, I just not sure, uh, you know, what's going to happen in this mod. Uh, but I will keep the night speed, feral speed, blood moon speed at nightmare, and also keep the feral sense on at night to make nights more dangerous. We can do airdrops, but we'll keep the airdrop markers off like we normally would do. And then um, on the advanced stuff, uh, I am going to turn off um, respawning of loot. I normally play with that off, even though I'm actually playing with it currently in my vanilla series. Uh, but we'll keep we'll turn that off. So once we loot something, it is looted, and that is all there is to it. We'll keep the daily progression limit up to eight because I don't like to be limited on that. And all of this stuff can stay normal. And then in the rebirth settings, because I was in here just kind of poking around earlier. Um, there's a lot of stuff here and I don't want to, you know, take a, a long time going through it. So let me, um, I'll tell you what, if, if you, if you just want to quickly see what I've chosen here, um, I'm going to scroll down and just pause the screen if you need to look at something. And then what I'll do when I edit the video is I'll just uh, put the timestamp in where we actually start the game for those of you who, you know, want to skip through this. For those of you who want to hear my commentary on why uh, I've chosen what I've decided to choose. Uh, let's go through that, but we're going to go through it pretty quickly. So uh, from what I do understand, which is very little, uh, Rebirth has a scenario called the purge and you have to go around and you have to, um, you know, kill zombies in areas and start removing them to kind of clear the path for, um, I guess, the military or whoever to come in and, you know, kind of take back the land, which is kind of interesting to me because uh, I did do a, a kind of a, a light role-playing ranger series, oh, I don't know, a year, year ago or so, Alpha 21, uh, where we did something very similar to that. So that's kind of cool that, uh, you know, that, that's actually built into the mod. So we're going to we're gonna try this purge scenario, and, that, and that's a new thing, too, from what I do understand. Uh, I, I did hop on uh, Furious Ramsey's Discord. He's the author, by the way, of Rebirth, in case you didn't know. And poked around a little bit, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very new to the game. And I want to kind of keep it that way because I want this to be a blind playthrough. Uh, so let's see, spawn confirmation. I want that to, to be on. That's, you know, so I can choose when to actually enter the game. And let's see, I have tornadoes to be on. Um, and I have that set to always, so I'm probably going to regret that. Uh, I have no idea what that's going to do. It, it suggests that it can be destructive, so I don't know if that can really screw up your base. Um, the assumption is that it can, so we'll see how that works. Uh, but I did set the multiplier down to 50%. I think it's normally in 100%, so we don't get them as frequently. Um, let's see, jobs, maximum job offered by White River Traders. I'm assuming that's per day. I'm not really sure about that. Uh, job pr progression is turned off because it's a party thing. Uh, 10 jobs to the next tier, repeat POI jobs. Basically, what that means is we can't go back and redo the same POI after we've done it, I believe. Um, and then I guess that POI only shows up one time in the traders list, if I understand that correctly. Uh, this hide surprise setting uh, basically means that um, we can take a job and it may or may not be infested and we won't know until we do it. So I thought that could be kind of exciting and it'll probably kill us. 
Uh, feeling lucky uh, increases loot and game stage, increases respawn of zombies. I'm turning, keeping that off. Uh, Opacity is like a gooey thing. You don't care about that. Uh, crosshair HUD, that puts your stamina, food, and stuff right around your crosshair, which seems to me like that would be distracting, so I have that turned off. This is all multiplayer stuff here. Genetics multiplier. Genetics, I think, have something to do with how you know some of the mods you can make that affect your attributes, so we'll kind of figure out how that works. Don't give a shit about aura sharing. Vehicle density is how many cars are on the road, so that's up to 200 by default. Uh, vehicles do not respawn. We can't pick up vehicles except for the bicycle because that's more realistic. Uh, restrictive healing doesn't allow you to spam things. I don't agree with that, nor do I want to deal with it, so that's turned off. Uh, this means if we die, I guess we get the penalty right away in, uh, in terms of... Uh, whatever that penalty is, I think. What is the penalty? Oh, yeah, we get that Grim Reaper thing. That's right. Well, I'm assuming that's what it is anyways. Um, there's restrictions on when you can hire NPCs. The, the mod does have um, a, a companions that you can hire. And I'm just going to keep that on the default setting, which is then based upon your charismatic nature level, whatever the hell that is, and the weapon type, player level, that sort of thing. So we'll just kind of keep that on default and see how that system works. Uh, companions have an inventory... Uh, that apparently they auto loot stuff. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but we'll figure it out. But I'm leaving that on. Um, quality of life will disable pack mule bonus. I never take pack mule anyway, so I'm just leaving that on default. This allows zombos to to come more directly at us instead of you know staying on a grid, which I think is going to be more realistic. Uh, toggles visibility of entity health bars. It's on default. Vanilla doesn't have any health bars at all, so I'm not sure exactly how that works. So we'll just leave that on default. Um, Instalute, no time delay to open. Yeah, no, I we're keeping that off because, um, you know, that's part of why you take the Lucky Looter perk. Well, assuming Lucky Looter's still in, in here. Uh, d it does have a nice lockpick mini games. I'm assuming that's going to be similar to like, you know, Fallout or Skyrim, hopefully, because I hate, absolutely hate the vanilla lockpicking in this game. It sucks. So it'll be nice to be actually be able to do something. Uh, blocks can catch on fire, so yeah, that that I, I have that on because it's realistic. So, you know, fire can spread, and I and I I think that well, there's got to be some way to. Yeah, well, how do you put it out? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you right click it with a jar of water. I, I, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, protect supply drops. Supply drops will be attacked and destroyed by animals. No, fuck that. There's no reason for an animal or a zombie to attack a supply drop that I can think of. Unless maybe they smell food in it or something. I don't know, but I don't want that on because I don't want them to attack it. Uh, this basically makes this like the uh, Romero mod, I think it's called, where you have to pretty much have to shoot them in the head all the time. I, I have that turned off because sometimes you can't get to a zombie's head, right? So we're going to keep that turned off. I do not want screen shake. That's automatic headache. Um, rebirth weather. Let's... Let's turn that on because it'd be interesting to see how the weather works. Uh, but I do have the fog density set to low because I hate fog, but I don't want to remove it altogether for realism, right? Uh, nights are going to be very dark, uh, so light sources are going to be absolutely critical. I don't know how that's going to, how well that's going to go with, you know, making YouTube videos and you guys being able to see what's going on. So we'll have to, we'll, we'll start with this. And if it, you know, if it's affecting the, the video lighting, you know, we might have to turn that off. We'll just see how it goes. But I'd like to keep it on for immersion. Uh, lots more trees, 300% more. Um, so that's on by default. We'll leave that that way. Uh, trees do not automatically regrow. Advanced farming um, makes it so we have to have light water, that kind of thing, which I think is realistic. Crops take 90 minutes. And then a game apparently has these things called events. I don't even know exactly what they are, but all these settings have to do with these events. If they're animal events, if they're bandit events, when they happen, if there's restrictions, those kinds of things. Um, so I just have that all set to the default and we'll just kind of see how those go. And then if we have, you know, if I feel like we need to adjust things as we go along, we can do that. Screamer Knights, apparently you can get Screamer Hordes. So I have that set to low um, because again, I, I don't know. I mean, Screamers are not supposed to show up unless you're heating the place up. So I, I'm not sure how that's going to impact things. So I've just got that set to lower right now, which I think is the default anyways. Anything that's white is the default setting. Um, game stage multiplier is normal. POI risk um, alters the player's game stage based upon the POI that's being visited. A low-level player attempting to clear out high-difficulty POIs will suffer the consequences. 
Okay, so I guess that's a balancing thing. If we're trying to get into a tier five and we're only at tier one, it's even harder. So, I, I mean, that's fair enough, I think. Ascension, um, a toggleless feature, which will make zombies stronger as you level. That, that one I'm not... I, I'm on the fence about this one because here's the thing. The whole point in leveling and getting stronger is so that you get stronger and, and you start getting the upper hand on the zombies. But if they also level up with you... You know, I, I guess, how is that balanced? I'm going to keep it on for now and see if I like the way that it's balanced and if I think that it's unbalanced. In other words, if it feels like we're not able to get a leg up on them, then we might turn it off. But we'll start with it, you know, on. Um, no Horde Knight progression. Uh, this feature makes zombies stronger as you weed out the weaker ones. I don't even understand the con the concept behind that. What, what you know, why? <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. So I'm going to keep that turned off. Um, you guys can tell me in the comments if it, if if this is something I should turn on and, and why I should turn it on. Uh, let's see. This allows, the rebirth allows some zombies to come back to life. And I think that's kind of partly why what this is named after. So we'll keep that on. Horde Knight multiplier is 10%. Um, signal XP multiplier. Set, uh, set the amount of class experience received when near a screamer signal. I don't even know what a screamer signal is. So we're just going to keep that on default. Horde Knight Plus turns on alternate Horde Knight experience. I have no idea what that means, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll turn it on and see what happens. Um, this increases uh, higher tier hordes uh, with your game stage. Um, so, yeah, we'll keep that on. I'll probably regret that and die horribly. And then, let's see, zombie spawn amount, zombie frequency, delay. Uh, we have to be game stage 10 before we can, I guess, before we see NPCs. I think that's what that means. How many bandits... How many survivors? Um, this has to do with how far away your companion has to be before they'll, uh, or an enemy has to be before your companion attacks them. So that's on default. Um, the hunting distance, I turned down on that because it was up, I thought, too high. You know, I don't want my companion to go after an animal and then attract a biker zombie in the beginning game or something like that, right? Mutated zombie spawns happen after day 14. I don't know what the hell that means exactly, unless we're talking about, you know, ball sack or booger, those kind of mutated zombies. Kamikazes apparently are zombies that, I guess, blow up and they run after you. Um, so this the default set is not to run into those while you're in POIs. Uh, we have demos. We can run into them at any time. It's not just a horror night thing. Entity event spawns. Uh, seekers and wraiths can spawn outside of blood moons. That's going to be fun. X-ray detection allows cops to see you through walls. Fuck that. No way. Um, feral sense. Um, nowhere to run. They all know. This means they always know where we are, I think. And I don't agree with that. That doesn't sound like fun to me. Because you can then never hide. If that's what that even means. Um, sleeper sense. I, I think what this does is it means sleepers will wake up before you actually get into the POI. Not sure how I feel about that, so I'm just going to keep that on the default, which is never. Um, auras and tables chance for your auras to trigger when you get hit by zombies. So auras, I guess, are extra temporary buffs or something. So we'll keep that on the default. Wandering horde frequencies are random. The size is random. Now, outbreaks are kind of like... Um, well, it says outbreaks are random wandering hordes that just keep coming. So... I'm not sure exactly how that works because if they just keep coming, that means you either A, eventually die, B, you run completely out of ammo, or C, you run away until they despawn. So I'm not really I'm not really sure about that. So I'm just leaving all that on the default for now and we'll see how it works and then again adjust accordingly. Okay, so yeah, I know that was a lot of stuff, but there are a ton of settings in here. And um, it would have even taken me longer to get through this had I not kind of looked through some of them in advance before, you know, starting here. So anyway, let's go ahead and click the start button and jump in and try out this mod. It should be good. Okay, here we are. It is day one. And let me do a quick adjustment on my camera here. Put that right there so it doesn't block anything. Perfect. Okay. 
So, the purge. The helicopter blades whirred to a stop as you hit the ground, the wind whipping dust and debris around your feet. The streets were eerily quiet, long since cleared of the undead, but the shadows inside the buildings told a different story. You'd heard the rumors. The real danger lurked behind closed doors, a death trap even for the most seasoned soldiers. Armed with basic supplies, your mission was simple. Clear out the remaining zombies from the forest, desert, snow wasteland, and the desolate burnt forest, each biome more dangerous than the last. So apparently in this mod, the burnt forest is the most dangerous biome. Interesting. For now, you're immune to the harsh effects of these lands until you reach level 5. After that, every step in the hostile territory could mean infection, dysentery, or utter exhaustion, unless, of course, you remember to pop a vitamin. Okay, so apparently we're immune from infection and that sort of thing until level 5. That means we could... Excuse me, that means we could drink dirty water up until level 5, I suppose, right? That seems to be what it says. Uh, purge 75% of a biome, and the next one will be just a little safer. But you've got a long way to go, and the real fight is just beginning. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's click OK to that. And, uh, oh my god. We get a bicycle right from the get-go? Well, that's cool. All right. Uh, looks like we're really close to a snow biome, too. All right, let's set that down then, and uh, on our toolbar. So... It looks like we have like a double toolbar. That's kind of nice. All right, let's see. Um, we have a tool. We have a class book and a couple notes to read there, it looks like. Okay, and then I think what this is, is this is kind of like, a, um, I think both Undead Legacy and Ravenhurst have like, uh, yeah, it's almost like a portable workbench that you can take with you. So, um, whoops, if we set that down. Right, okay, so we can use this to, to make various things. Huh, we can make a chemistry station in here. How about that? That's cool. That looks like a pretty damn functional workbench. Okay, good. And I'm assuming, you know, like in those other mods, we can pick it up just by breaking it. Yep, we did. Okay, good. All right, let's put um, some of this other some of this stuff that we don't immediately need over in this other toolbar. So this says S eight S nine. Does that mean like shift nine? Oh, it does. Okay, so that's what that means. S means shift. Okay, that's nice. I love that, man. Like a double toolbar, twice as many as vanilla gives you. Love it. Okay, so we have some tools here. Let's put the axe here because that'll kind of be our starting melee weapon, I guess, until we figure out what the hell we're doing. And then, um, so it looks like we got some water, some vitamins, some cat food, stuff like that to eat. And we got these notes. So let's do this. Let's put the water stuff. Um, oh, they start us with the, well, actually they start us with a whole set of iron tools. That's pretty nice. Um, okay. So let's set the wrench over there and we don't need immediate, you know, emergency access to those things. Uh, let's put the water in zero and maybe we'll bring these things down on our toolbar for now just for encumbrance reasons and then let's read this first note so this is a supplies note i won't lie to you this mission isn't easy but if anyone can do it it's you we've equipped you with the basics armor for some protection water to stay hydrated and canned food that with a bit of effort can be crafted into better meals using local flowers like goldenrod and chrysanthemum oh okay so we should check that before we just straight up eat a canned you know, a can of food by itself. You have vitamins to ward off the harsh biome effects, a few basic tools, a bicycle for getting around, and a toolbox for crafting essentials. Nights can get dark, so keep that torch close by. Most importantly, there's a class book. It'll guide you in choosing a weapon expertise. This is key to getting stronger, uh, and you'll need that strength to face what's ahead. These supplies are just the start. As you report on purged areas, more will be sent. With 75 zombies cleared from a fully purged area, we'll deliver a fresh Supply drop. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that's different uh, from, you know, the vanilla supply drop. Stay sharp and keep moving. All right. So what does this one say? This is uh, a threat scanner. A threat scanner module has been integrated into your communication system, giving you the ability to estimate the number of hosti uh, hostiles present in any discovered location. This tool will assist you in assessing danger levels and planning your next moves as you explore new areas. However, the module isn't without its flaws. It may occasionally fail to detect threats in certain locations, meaning it's not always fully reliable. 
Because of these limitations, your mission remains the same. Clear approximately 75% of each biome. Once this target is reached, a team of soldiers will be sent in to finish clearing out the remaining hostiles, allowing you to continue your mission without delay. Remember, others are working on similar missions in other parts of the world. Stay focused, keep progressing, and know that your efforts are contributing to a larger global push. Oh, that's really cool, because again, that's kind of similar to my my little role-playing ranger series that we did a while back, where um, my character went in, and in that particular case, we, we specifically targeted all of the army bases and cleared those out, and then you know, role played that the army, you know, were sent troops in to reoccupy the land. So it's kind of a similar deal. That's really cool. All right. So apparently we got this little thing thingamadoodle that'll tell us how many areas we have left in, I guess, a purge zone and then how many enemies are in that particular area. So that's going to be pretty handy to, to, to know. All right. So I guess the next thing we should do is our class book. Right. Okay. So let's go ahead and see what we got here. Uh, so we have a berserker that's probably going to be, you know, like sledgehammer or something, a uh, builder, a butcher, hunter. Well, I guess we have a hunter and a butcher. So maybe this is more, oh, that's probably like a blade build, actually. Uh, that's That looks to be like, you know, maybe an archery build. A madman is fisticuffs. Okay, so he's got like little icons in here that kind of indicate what it is. Oh, so... The, uh, that's probably a building hammer, even though it looks like a sledgehammer. Well, maybe they do give you a sledgehammer as your weapon. Hmm. Okay. Um, so the soldiers, soldiers got a big ax. Sous chef has, I don't even know what the hell that is. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. A techno geek. Okay. So that potentially stun batons. A thug is, I don't know what that is either. It looks like maybe a club with barbed wire or something. And then witch doctor. How interesting. Is there like magic in this uh, mod? Huh? Okay. Well, I, I think, you know, it feels like we're kind of like a soldier, right? Because, you know, the army or a military of some sort obviously is sending us in, uh, you know, in advance, you know, we're kind of like a vanguard, I guess going in to clear the way for the army to come in. So it feels to me like soldier is probably the most appropriate based upon the scenario. Now, obviously we could do whatever we wanted to, right? But uh, we're going to go with soldier for now. Okay. So let's go ahead and craft the soldier reference book. And then we'll open that up and it should give us some soldiery stuff. Okay. So read this to start on the path of the soldier or to switch back to the soldier. If you are multi-classing. Oh, that's cool. So we, so I guess we don't, do we consume that or do we have to remake it if we want to switch back to a soldier? I don't know. We'll figure that out as we go. Um, you have attained soldier class level six or better. You unlock soldier skills in the soldier aura mod installed in your armor will still be active for you. Even if you are playing a different class. Oh, Okay. as long as we're, I'm assuming as long as we're still wearing that armor, right? Okay. Let's go ahead and use this. All right. So that gave us, oh man, an M60. Are you shitting me? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's a really, that's a really nice uh, weapon at the very beginning of the game, even if it is a level one. Oh my God. Okay. I'll take it. Uh, what is this? Okay. So this is the aura mod. What does it do? Uh, increases you and your nearby allies' chances of causing double damage Ooh, while using ranged weapons. Nice. Okay, so we need to install that in an armor slot. Um, let's, what are we wearing for armor? We have a lumberjack hat, an athletic outfit, farmer gloves, and rogue boots. So it's just kind of a hodgepodge. All right, well, let's go ahead and um, install this in, I guess, our chest piece. And now we have a chance of doing double damage in a shot. That's really cool. Okay. And then um, it gave us the this ammo. Excuse me. So we'll put... Um, let's see. Let's put the torch there. Uh, we're going to put a bow there, a, a kniffy there. And let's put our M60 in the, the number four slot. Oh, I can't believe we're starting off with an M60. My goodness, um, we need to we need to be careful with it though. Uh, I want to be conserve ammo. I don't want to go crazy because if we run out of ammo, then it doesn't do us any good. Obviously, right? 
Okay, now next question is can we um can we still make like the basic stuff like a bow uh a black magic arrow? What the hell is that to? Uh this arrow has been dipped in a solution that will turn normal undead to temporarily fight for you. Are you shitting me? Really? That's cool. Be aware that hitting them with a power attack will turn them back. Oh my god, how do I make that? <laughs> uh, Black Magic Bolt Tier 1. How do I make it? I don't know. It doesn't... Um, it doesn't tell me what I need to make it. Okay, so maybe that's like a perk or something we have to learn. Uh, it's interesting that it would be available to me, though, because I didn't choose the witch doctor. But anyway, okay, here we go. Yeah, so we can make a bone knife. We can make normal arrows, a normal bowl, all the pipe stuff. Okay, that's what I wanted to, to check, um, and even a stone sledgehammer. So even though we didn't spec in this, the sledgehammer is, for those of you who have been watching me at any for any length of time, know that that's my favorite melee weapon in the game. And, of course, we're going to want a bow and a kniffy, too. So, all right, well, let's start gathering up the stuff for that, and then we'll kind of figure out what's what's next. So how about if we get, um, where's the sledge? Let's track this, and let's get what we need for that. So, oh, looks like there's new uh, resources, too. So, okay, so what happens if I pick this up? That gives me... Small stones. Okay, so we need 10 of those, and then this is probably a stick, and this is a cord or something. All right, so to get sticks, I guess we just do this, right? Yeah, that gave me two sticks. Okay. And uh, let's also pick up some chrysanthemum and some grass. In fact, we probably need the grass for, uh, you know, for that rope thingy. Oh, let me let me check something. In vanilla, if you punch a rock, you get XP for it. Nope, doesn't look like that happens in the mod. Okay, we got a trash pile here. All right, let's take that for now. We do have to be, watch our inventory. We have enough sticks. Um, can we make the? Yeah, it's called rope. Okay, let's make three rope, and then we just need to get some more of this stone here. Here we have a stump. Why don't we break into this and see if we can get a honey. Oh, look at that. Honeycomb. Um, it gives you energy, tastes great, and can help fight off early stages of infection. So we don't have to first turn it into a jar of honey. What was the... I think Undead Legacy requires you to gather honeycombs and then turn it into a jar before you can use it. So in this case, it looks like we don't need to do that. I am the most familiar, just for you guys that don't know, with Undead Legacy. That's the overhaul that I've played the most, uh, though I haven't played it in a little while either. So, you know, I when I make those comparisons, it's just based upon, you know, what I'm familiar with, right? Okay, so let's grab that stuff, um, and then we just need more stones. So let's just keep picking up these small stones. I don't want to get too terribly far away from the bike, but I want to keep it on the on the road for now. Probably is not going to be smart for us to go into the snow biome at this point. Well, there's a highway there, though. Okay. The other thing we're obviously going to need is feathers. Uh, and I'm not seeing a lot of bird's nests around here. So that's a little concerning. Is that one right there? I think it is. Yes. Oh, and it has the eggs in it, too. That's cool. Okay, that gave us eight feathers. So now we should be able to make the bow. Um, what the hell, man? Oh, there we go. Oh no, sorry, we're 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 actually trying to make the sledge first. My bad. Okay, so let's let's craft the sledgehammer, and then I'm gonna move um you over to to here, and that'll be just about done. Okay, so stamina is right here, I guess. So we got health, stamina, water, and food. So one power attack, two. 
So that the most we can do is three power attacks. So we're going to have to be careful of our stamina on this for sure. All right, let's make a, uh, ourselves... Well, let's make some arrows. Um, oh, we're going to need more stone. So here, there's a boulder over here. Let's do shift seven. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to, but I'm very happy that we have, um, you know, that extra toolbar space. That's really nice. And we have a, a GUI in the lower left-hand corner with more information and a mini map. Oh, that's cool. I just now noticed that there's a mini map. Huh. Okay. Uh, so, all right. So let's see, let's make six of those. Um, let's see, stone arrow. Is it cheaper to make it in here? No, it looks like it's the same if you make it in your inventory or the toolbox. All right, so we just need two more sticks to make two more arrows. There's three sticks there. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to make the... A primitive bow. So let's track that. I uh, there's probably not any reason to make this since they already gave us a set of armor. Uh, all right, so we need four sticks and two more rope. Let's do the rope first. In oh no, those aren't sticks. What are those? What are these things? A tree branch. Okay, so we're probably gonna have to cut a tree down to get those. You think? Okay, let's just turn all of this into rope for now. And I'm assuming we can turn those into cloth. What's this? A limestone. What is that used for? Limestone fragments. All right. Maybe for making concrete later, I'm guessing. All right, we need four branches. So let's go ahead and cut down this tree here. That's exactly what we got. It's four branches. Okay, so craft the bow. And then after that, we're going to want to find some bones so we can do a bone knife. Let's get back. Oh, there's a POI up there. Uh, let's go check that POI out since it's right here. We should be able to get some bones from this. We had six recipes. Oh, a bone baton. Huh. A bone blade. And a bone knife. What's, what's the difference between the blade and the knife? I don't know. I want to make the knife. For now, and then a horror panther. Oh man, there's gonna be some crazy, crazy zombs in this. Let's put the bow in slot number two and the kniffy in slot number three, and make sure this is loaded with stone arrows. And then let's go see what's going on over at this POI here. Does it give us our... Okay, there we go. There's nine Zeeks in here. Camp Carwall. Uh, why do they call it Carwall? I have no idea. <laughs> okay, anyway. um, Do not enter. Let's go ahead and go in here and see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. There's some potato plants and some corn. Okay, we have a zombo waking up there. Get some bleeds going on you. Okay, so I did set them to sprint, but that's not anywhere near as bad as nightmare speed, which is what I normally would play on. What does she have in her hands? Oh shit, I don't know. Does that mean she's like infected? 
Let's, um... Let's take one of these. I don't want to get infected. Search Marlene. What the fuck? Sample remains of explosive immune zombies. A sample from the remains of an explosion immune zombie you attempted to harvest. Why? Because you're sick. That's why. <laughs> okay. What do I... Body bags of explosive immune zombies. Why? A, a pile of body bags contain the sample remains of explosive immune zombies that the, the Black Shield wanted you to retrieve for them. Who the hell is the Black Shield? Is that who sent me down here? Hmm. Okay. I guess we'll hang on to that for now. It's kind of stinky, though. Not going to lie. Um. All right. Let's go back in here. We have another thing of corn and a pipe. I don't... Uh, well, I guess we'll loot the gas for the moment. We'll get this... Get these guys for some more bones. That door's locked. That door's unlocked. Oh, we can search boxes. That's nice. Oh, wow, look at that. Screws. Nothing better to keep things tightly bound. All right. Oh, shit. Get some bleeds on him. Actually, let's see if we can knock him on his ass first, and then we can bleed him up a little more. I need to actually look at the description on this knife. Let's see if it works the same as it does in vanilla. He's an inmate. Oh my god, look at all that stuff. Okay. At least we didn't get uh, the head of a explosive immune zombie thing. Uh, Alright, let's look at this real quick. So, regular attacks cause one bleeding wound and power attacks at least two. But does it stack like it does in the vanilla? I don't know. Doesn't say. Uh, we're also encumbered a little bit, so let's put some re remove. What does that mean? Oh shit! Well, we got to be careful with that. I don't want to remove it. I'm thinking limestone's probably not. Is it worth anything? No sell price. It's probably not something we need right now. We certainly don't need oak seed. Uh, let's keep the honeycomb. I don't think we need the clay. That's something we might be able to sell. Uh, don't know that we need rotting flesh right now. We will eventually, of course. Let's get rid of the nitrate. That we should be able to eat if we need to. We'll put the stinky head in there. That we can sell. I know we're going to need screws for something. I just have no idea what it is. That we can sell. And um, what's this? A large rock. What? You can't recognize a large rock when you see one? What do we do with large rocks? make all of that shit okay um i i want to i tell you what let's can we oh no i need some kind of a machine for that okay let's just get rid of those for now um because i don't think there's something that we're gonna need immediately and oh no shit you must empty the vehicle's container before removing it i'm glad I hope it gives you a warning, you know, before you do that. Because if it doesn't, that's scary. Um, how about if we keep this on us and this and that? Because we can immediately use those. And we'll put these things in here. All right, let's get, get going here. It's already almost 1 p.m. And I'd like to see if we can get to a town or at least figure out where our base is going to be before the nightfall. It's going to get really dark, and who knows what other bad things are going to happen. Uh, I guess we'll take the iron for now. Any opportunities for sneaky sneak shots? I'm not seeing any Zika Roos. 
Oh shit. We got a spider. Alright, he's, put, he's putting the hurt on us, so... What was that noise? I don't know what that noise was. Um, do we have any kind of medical at all? Not really. Okay, we're gonna have to... We might have to use our... Our gun here a little bit more. That's cement, bricks, and sand, probably. Not something I think we need right now. Let's try this toolbox. Oh, wow. Well, look at that. A bellows and a table saw blade. All right. Definitely think we're going to need those later. Some more corn. Um, I'll take all of that. Okay, that's not lootable. We still have six zombs left. Make that five. They're all gonna, the rest of them are gonna be in that mobile home thingy. Trailer, trailer thing. We have five of them left. Is this, is this a vanilla POI? I don't recognize this POI. I don't know if this mod has its own custom POIs or not. Remember, I haven't really read up on it at all. Oh shit! Okay, we're in, we're in pretty bad shape now, health-wise, so we're going to have to rely upon our M60 for the rest of this clear. We know there's four more Zeeks left. There's one in the bathroom there. There's a hatch down there, too. I don't think... Well, there could be one behind there. What is that noise? Oh, shit. Okay, see, that guy's got some kind of glowing shit on his hands. Is our vitamin still active? Whatever that is, it can't be good. Okay, we got three zombs activated. Okay, he's coming up the stairs. What the fuck? That's a little booger. Oh, wow. That was weird. He's a minion. What the hell is that? A blueprint, a strength genetic thingy. Use this to craft a mod for sexy T-Rex minor. Se okay. So it's like a, a strength gene that we use for strength attribute mod. How interesting. Okay. Is that just a creepy crawly? What's that? Constitution, pack meal, healing factor, or iron gut. And another stinky zombie head. Okay. Uh. So he's... 
it, apparently he's down below, so I don't think he can get to us at the moment. Potato. Oh, look at that. Cooking pot. Nice. I'm assuming we need that pretty much in the same way that we would need it in vanilla. Clothing shelf. And the parts. Nothing in there. Oh, come on, bandage. Well, you know what? That's not a bandage, but I'll take it. Um... Oh, it looks like we could make a bandage in our little toolkit thingamadoodle. All right, that's nice. We need to do that ASAP. Let's get some plastic. And we'll harvest this bed for stuff. Screws. Oh, we got nails, too. Okay, well, nails are in vanilla, too, so... Still says there's two zombs left, though. Okay, tell you what, before we before we go after them, let's do a shift zero. And I want to... Plastic Baden, what's that do? Oh! Okay, so we can use that to make more arrows. That's cool. Um, I want to make... A bandage. So where's the cloth? Here. Okay. So recipes make one bandage and then we should be able to make the first aid. That's cool that we can do that now. We don't have to wait for a perk. All right. And now we're going to take this right now because damn. Hurt. Let's take, let's make another one of these just to stop bleeding. If we get a bleeding effect. All right, this is interesting, man. It's kind of fun playing something something new. Um, did I... Wait a minute. Didn't I just make a bandage? What did I do? Craft. Yes, I didn't. Okay, let's put that in the zero slot. Uh, we're get, starting to get kind of hungry and thirsty, but... Let's go to number six. We'll pick this back up for now. Okay. So let's shoot you. And this is why I didn't want to take the headshots setting because what the hell does that mean? Does that mean we like got a an action point or something? I'll bet you that's what that is. OG reports nine targets purged from Camp Carwall in the, the Pine Forest. So I thought it said there were two zombs left. Hmm, I don't know. Okay, let's get our arrows back. And we have some stuff down here to loot. Let's check the medical pile first. Okay, steroids always good. Is that beer? Haha, -ha, it's beer. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> I'm drinking some Odell's IPA. Good stuff. Um, ammo pile. Nice. Come on, 762s. No, but you know what? I'll take that. Hell yeah. It's the best mod to put on this besides the uh the ergonomic one. Okay, let's see what's in the chamois box. Some salmon and some potatoes. And then the main loot. Ah, uh, seven, six, twos, and two bandages. Oh, that's freaking awesome. Okay, we are massively encumbered. Oh, we got a helmet light. Really? Oh my god, that's awesome. It took me forever to find a helmet light in, in the vanilla playthrough. Well, okay, I guess that solves our problem about not being able to see at nighttime. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So, um, let's grab this and maybe we'll grab some more plastic because now that I know that we can make arrows out of it. Oh, hold on. It seems to me like bird's nests are ultra rare compared to 
Um, oh, you know what? It just occurred to me. I shouldn't have taken that vitamin because we're immune until we hit level five. Forgot about that. Just not used to all this stuff, man. This is all so new. Anyway, what I was saying was... Um, looks like we're probably going to rely on plastic a lot more than feathers for making um, arrows. But I'm glad we have that as an, you know, as an option. Did we not get anything for taking that apart? It's like we didn't. Okay, so we have cleared our first POI, ladies and gentlemen. Yay, us. And um, let's uh, stack any extra stuff in there. We are very encumbered. So I think really our next order of business here is to find a trader in at least an initial base. I don't really, I don't, I don't want to really live here because I don't know. We need to be near a trader and near a town. Um, let's do this before we wrap up this first episode though. Can I make a campfire? Cause it did seem to indicate we can make a little bit better food if we had like goldenrod and chrysanthemum. Uh, so I have, I have some chrysanthemum there. Let's grab some goldenrod. And you can get cotton too, just for making more cloth. Stamina. That's amazing that we found that helmet light. You know, that's always a concern of of a YouTuber making gaming videos is lighting and making sure your audience can see. So when you play games where darkness is, you know, part of the immersion, it's always kind of a, a tricky thing, I suppose. All right. So let's look at here. Um, basic beef burgundon. I, I can't speak French. Um, where's that cooking pot? Okay. Let's put the cooking pot in there. Boiled water. Can we make boiled water? Um, does that work for fuel? Yeah, we can. Nice. Okay. That's one thing I really don't like about vanilla, and I don't think anybody else does too that I'm aware of. The way they handle water now, it just sucks. Come on, bring back the jars, fun pimps. And the, you know, the old way of doing things. That's how I feel about it anyways. Okay, so good. We made some water, and since we're making some boiled water... Oh, this is distilled water. It's good for your digestion, regenerating stamina, curing dysentery. Slightly better hydration and effects last longer. Okay, let's let's save that and let's drink this instead. What's it say? At least you can't see anything swimming around in there, but it's still sort of risky to drink. Oh, a 7% chance. Okay, but we're not level 5 yet, so we should be able to safely drink that. Can we make another kind of water in here? We need some kind of whatever that machine is for distilled water. We can make glasses, which is good. Okay, well, because we're not level 5, speaking of which, do we have, like, skill points to spend? I didn't even think about that. Uh, we're level 1. I don't... Yeah, we don't... I, I'm going to have to figure this out. I don't even know how the, any of this works. Okay, well... So theoretically, we're not supposed to get dysentery till level 5. So let's just drink this. Even though it has cooties full. Oh, good. We get the jar back, too. Thank you, Furious Ramsey. <laughs> oh, man. Some of the decisions the Fun Pimps made with vanilla is like, what the hell, guys? Come on. I mean, I love them, right? I love the game, all that, but still. Okay, well, let's see... We could make, uh, what is this? Purina's tamale hash? Interesting. But even so, this stuff is still a bit be beyond our ability right at the moment, I think. We could make a baked potato. Um, We can make five baked potatoes. Do they make us thirsty, though, like they do in vanilla? I don't know. Let's go ahead and... Oh. That gives us a lot of burn time. 
Okay, let's make baked potatoes. And hopefully these damn things don't make us thirsty. Um, we could, oh, I could have made a boiled egg, but we needed the water too, so. Food, health, stamina. Oh, nice. So that doesn't make us thirsty like it does a vanilla. Very good. Okay, so shift two. Get that, get our food back up a little bit here. Beeswax. What is that used for? You can use this wax to make yourself candle. Oh, okay, right, gotcha. It's used for exactly what you would think it would be used for. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, we're going to wrap up this episode here. And um, we'll pick up right where we left off of the next episode. I'm going to literally stop this recording and then start the next one. Well, after I edit the first recording, of course. And uh, the goal, of course, will be to find a, a trainer in a town. Um, and that's what we need to do. And it's getting, you know, it's getting on in the day, too, so... We're going to have to really be careful at night because, remember, I have Feral Sense turned on at night. So that's that's on plus whatever the mod itself is going to, you know, do to us. So how's our food? Should I eat this now? I, th I think I'm going to. Oh, a 12% chance of dysentery. Oh, so he brought back dysentery from canned food. How interesting. Well, let's eat it now because we need the food and we need the space. Okay. And then... um. We're 85 hydration, 89 food. That's even going up a little more. So I think we're in pretty decent shape for the moment on food and water. Not super good, but not terrible either. And uh, so, yeah, let's pick this up. Well, we'll pick this up. We don't really need to uh, pick up the thingy, uh, the campfire. We're just going to leave that there. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. So, yeah, this is a blind playthrough. Feel free to leave comments. Uh, help me learn the game. Um, try and avoid spoilers if you can. Uh, whatever that even means. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, I don't like spoilers, but at the same time, you know, I am open to, to, to tips and suggestions and stuff. So just use your best judgment on that. And uh, with that being said, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share out the video, and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.